Psalm 100, it says, Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving. Go into His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and praise His name. For he is good. His unfailing love continues forever. And his faithfulness continues through all generations. Would you just give thanks to our God right now for him being so good. Lord, we thank you and we just praise you, God. We thank you and we praise you, God. Every blessing, everything that you have done, every valley that you have been with us through, God. We praise you and we thank you. You're going to do great and mighty things this morning. You are going to break and mend hearts. You are going to break through every situation, every struggle. God, we thank you. We give you praise. Would you just give him a shout of praise one more time? We thank you, Lord. Come on, slap somebody a high five and tell them let's praise Jesus this morning. He's thankful to be free in the Lord today. Go on and speak against my borrowed innocence. The judge is my defense. I'm going free. Right when the gavel fell, I heard the freedom bell ring through the heart of hell. I'm going free. I'm going free. I'm going to sing glory, glory. Glory, glory. Glory, glory, hallelujah, Jesus is my liberty, I'm going free. Somebody shout, I'm free. I'm free. I won't go back again, it's just not who I am. Lord, I'm a brand new man, I'm going free. I'm on it. Glory, 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 hallelujah, you threw my shackles in the sea. Glory, glory, hallelujah, Jesus is glory, my glory. liberty. Glory, glory, hallelujah, you threw my shackles in the sea. Glory, glory, hallelujah, Jesus is my liberty, I'm going. Hallelujah. I am free indeed. <laughs> I am free. I am free indeed. We are free. We are free indeed. We are free. Free indeed. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Glory, glory, hallelujah, Jesus is my name. Glory, 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 hallelujah, you threw my shackles in the sea. Glory, glory, hallelujah, Jesus is my name.
thankful for Jesus this morning he's worthy he's righteous
Jehovah, and I am the King, I am Messiah, David's offspring. I am your high priest, and I am the Christ, I am the resurrection, and I am the life. I am. Just the drums, let's go. Hey. I am hope, I am peace, I am joy, I am rest. I am your comfort and relief from your stress. I am strength, I am faith, I am love, I am power. I am your freedom this very hour. Somebody give me praise this morning. It is impossible. He's reaching out to make me whole. Reaching out to make me whole. Death in its place. His life is flowing through my life.
God of miracles. The one, come on, sing. The God who was and is to come. God of miracles, the God of miracles. One more time, come on. The God who was and is to come. The power of the risen one. The God who brings the dead to life. Come on, if you believe he's the God of miracles, can you give the Lord a hand clap and a shout of praise this morning? If you will, turn with me in your Bibles to Psalm chapter 46. We're going to jump into the Word this morning. Psalm chapter 46. I have been excited about this message for a few weeks now. I know my staff is ready for me to preach it, so I'll quit talking about it. And so uh, the next two weeks, I believe that God has given me a very definitive word for a now season. Somebody say a now season. We've been talking about for the last several weeks, I really believe with all of my heart that the Lord showed me through a vision that the last week of September through the last, I'm sorry, the last week of August through the last week of September, there was going to be a shift moment where God was going to shift gears, the season was going to shift, and that we must be attentive and take hold and grab of it so that we can be a part of what God's doing. Can somebody say amen? amen. Here's what I know about the Word. The Word tells us to behold, I am doing a, somebody say that is our scripture for the year. Behold, I am doing a new thing. But here's the thing that puzzled me about the scripture. It says, do you not perceive it? How many knows that sometimes God does something we don't even realize it? And so what I want to do is I want to have my eyes open. I want to have eyes to see what God is doing in the world around us. Can somebody say amen? How many knows when things happen of great significance or even when things happen where it seems like it might not even matter, God is working all things together for our good. And so we've got to be attentive at what God is doing. Psalm chapter 46, we're going to jump in right here. Uh, the notes are available for you on the Bible app. It says, God is our refuge and our strength. Can somebody say amen? amen? Always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. For a river brings joy to the city of our God, the sacred home of the Most High. God dwells in that city. It cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, God will protect it. The nations are in chaos and their kingdoms crumble. God's voice thunders and the earth melts. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Listen to this. Come see the glorious works of the Lord. See how He brings destruction upon the world. He causes wars to end throughout the earth. He breaks the bow and snaps the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Whoa! Now we just heard last night, and this isn't in my notes, and I'm not preaching about wars or rumors of wars or all these. Um, I, but we saw last night that North Korea is trying to, trying to do their thing, right? I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm sick of hearing about it. And so, but it's very real. But I know a God who, at the sound of His voice, can cause wars to end. And I can tell you this, He can cause wars to end before they ever begin. Now, I don't know what God's will is and all this, and I'm not going to try to figure that out. But I do know that I serve a God who's in control, and I don't live in the cosmos of this world anyway. I'm a citizen of the kingdom of God, so can I speak to you this morning and say do not be afraid somebody shout I will not be afraid 
verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. Woo! Somebody ought to shout praise to God just for that. I will be honored in every nation, every Muslim, Hindu. Come on! I will be honored by every nation. In the United States of America, He will be honored. I will be honored throughout the world. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank You for Your Word this morning. God, I pray that You will speak to our hearts and change our lives in the name of Jesus. Everybody said... Amen. Today I want to speak a message entitled, Don't Move. Look at your neighbor and say, Don't Move. Don't get up and go to the bathroom. Don't go and walk up in the halls. Uh, Okay, amen. (laughs) Don't move. If I could subtitle this message, I would call it this. How to stand firm in the midst of chaos. How to stand firm in the midst of chaos. Now we are watching the aftermath of Hurricane Harvey, and we just took up an offering for that. And how many of you know that buildings and structures that had a firm foundation are okay? We've got friends who just built a house in the Houston area, and I called to check on them, and I said, hey, how are you guys doing? They said, you know what? We chose to build on high ground, and we have a firm foundation. We are good. There's water everywhere, but uh, the house is good. All of our stuff is good. But then you have people who built on low ground, or maybe not the same foundation, whatever the case is, and they're seeing destruction. So I want to speak on how to stand firm in the midst of, of chaos. 1 Corinthians 16, 13 gives us this word, be on your guard. Stand firm. Somebody say firm. In the faith, be courageous and be strong. Ephesians 6, 11 through 14, uh, the first half of 14 says, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes for our struggle is not against flesh and blood now I know I do this all the time but somebody say it's not personality it's principality look at your neighbor and say it's not personality it's principality now look at somebody else and say it's not you it's me no just kidding just kidding Hey, that's what I heard all the time growing up as a teenager. Hey, it's not you. I mean, didn't you say that all the time? It's not you. It's me. Really, she did say that a lot. I can tell you. Okay, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Your struggle is not even against what you see this morning. And it's not even against the impossibility that's in your life. It's against a principality who hates you and who hates the mission that God has placed on your life. But it is against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. I am sick and tired of watching the enemy take ground from the people of God. I'm sick and tired of watching the enemy steal what belongs to God's people and take it as if it was his. Somebody ought to shout, it's mine. Here's the deal. The Lord has entrusted you with what you have. He's entrusted it to you. Listen, He's given you homes, He's given you land, He's given you jobs, He's given you a beautiful wife for some of you men who's, you know, I mean, I've got the best. But, you know, He's given you children, some of you, He's given... And listen, don't let the enemy take it. You stand your ground. And say, you're not coming on my ground because my ground is built on the rock who is Jesus Christ and you have no access. Somebody shout, enemy access, denied. And after you have done everything to stand, I love this. After you have done everything, the winds have beat on you. The rains have come. Life has taken its toll on you. What God wants to see at the end is that you are still standing. Be 
a follower of Jesus Christ never ensures you a problem-free life. But it means your feet are planted on the solid rock of Jesus Christ and it is a foundation that's not going to crack. It's not going to waver. It's not going to float off like some of the roads have in Houston. It's not going to do any. Listen, it is going to stand the test of time. If the foundation's standing, all you've got to do is determine. I'll stand on the foundation. After you've done everything to stand, stand firm. Psalm 40 verse 2 says this, He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and the mire, and He set my feet on a rock, and He gave me a firm place to stand. Sickness may come, death may come, your children may act like ever-loving fools. But you have a firm place to plant your feet and say, I shall not be moved. We used to sing that song. Do y'all remember that? Yes. I shall not be moved. Listen, we need to start singing that, man. When the devil starts fighting you, when, the war, when, the, when those situations come, when the impossibilities come. Hey, devil, I shall not, I shall not be moved. A firm place to stand. Look at your neighbor and say, don't you move. The enemy's mission for you has never changed. And we say this all the time, but if you're not aware and you're not alert, then you're going to be moved. But it is to steal, kill, and destroy. He doesn't have any other intentions. He wants to steal from you. He wants to kill your potential. And he wants to destroy your destiny. Don't let him do it. In order for him to accomplish his mission, here's what the enemy needs you to do. He needs you to move. He needs you to move. In order for the enemy to take your ground, because you're a child of God, he needs you to vacate the ground. So you know what he does? He intimidates you. He scares you. He manipulates you. Because as long as you're on the ground, he has no access. Listen, if you back up and you decide it's too hard, I'm tired of being the man of God for my family. Or I'm tired of being the woman of God for my children. Or I'm tired of doing this in my church. Or I'm tired. You know what? Nobody ever says thank you. Nobody ever encourages me. Nobody ever pats me on the back. I'm done. I'm tired. You know what you've done? You have stepped your feet off of the territory that God gave you. And you said, here, enemy, you can have it. What the enemy needs you to do is he needs you to move. Listen, what I would like to see is for men of God to be unwavering. To be unshaken. To be pillars of the church. That's what we used to call the elders of the church. Man, these are the pillars of the church. What does that mean? Is that they have built a firm foundation and they are standing tall and they are holding up the structure of the church. That's what men of God should be. That's what, listen, I want prayer warriors who will pray even when it's hard to pray. I want worshipers who will worship with all of their might when, even when they don't feel like it. Listen, we've got to quit letting the enemy cause us to move. Now watch this. I'm going to explain this. Matthew 7, 24 through 27 says this, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house on the what? Rock. Y'all check out on me. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall. Again, when you accept Jesus Christ, you are almost signing up for trouble. I hate to discourage you this morning. You're almost signing up for trouble because Jesus told his disciples, hey, there's going to be many troubles. Troubles of many kinds. Another translation says of various kinds. How many of you know you don't need various kinds of trouble? I can make enough trouble on my own. So, but whenever you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the enemy puts a target on your back and he says, hey, we're not going to let... But you know what? When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have decided to build your foundation on a rock that says it doesn't matter what kind of missiles he sends... It doesn't matter if he sends a hydrogen bomb or a nuclear weapon. It doesn't matter because I shall not be moved. 
When you accept Jesus Christ, man, you accept Him as your strength like we read a while ago, your refuge, the one who's going to help you to endure all of life's troubles. God is there to protect you and to help you in your time of trouble. It says, but everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Look at somebody and say, don't move. The Bible says this, the sun shines on the just and the unjust alike, and the rain falls on the just and the unjust alike. Amen? Is that Bible? Hurricane Harvey. Now, I had this message prepared before, before all that, but, man, it just painted a perfect picture. We have people in Houston who weren't serving God who lost their homes, lost their businesses. But how many knows we also have people down there, men and women of God, who lost their homes, who lost their churches. We have 15 pastors who lost their homes and their churches just in the assemblies of God. I mean, uh, that's not including all the, listen, godly and ungodly got the same storm. But whenever you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have a hope to stand on that says, God can bless me with more than I lost. Can somebody say amen? Listen, we have a hope in Jesus Christ. Listen, I can't imagine going through the storms and the troubles of life without the hope of Jesus Christ. Can somebody say amen? So let's look at some ways to apply this this morning. Number one, we must determine. Somebody say determine to stand firm. You've got to make that decision now. If you wait until the storm comes and you decide you want to stand firm then, listen, then you've waited too late. You've got to make a decision now. I'm going to stand firm regardless what comes my way. Psalm 46, our text says this in verse 1. God is our refuge and our strength, always ready to help in our times of trouble. Do we really realize that God is there to help us no matter what comes our way? So we will not fear when earthquakes come. It did not say if earthquakes come. It said when they come. When they come, we will not be afraid. The mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. I love the psalmist tone here. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the earthquakes come. Let, hey, it's not going to affect me. Let the mountains tremble and the water surge. I am going to stand firm because my feet are planted on the rock of Jesus Christ. Number one, we've got to determine to stand firm. Number two, we've got to remember that you are not alone. Remember, you are not alone. Somebody say, I'm not alone. Verse 4 says this, I love this, because we are a part of the kingdom of God. We're a part of the kingdom of God, folks. Can I say it again? We are the part of the kingdom of God, the creator of the universe, the one who put the oceans in their place, the one who put the land that we're standing on today in its place. We're a part of his kingdom. A river brings joy to the city of our God. The sacred home of the Most High, God dwells in that city. It cannot be destroyed from the very break of day. God will protect it. The nations are in chaos and their kingdoms crumble. God's voice thunders and the earth melts. Can I tell you it doesn't matter what's going on in the world? God is still in control. He is with you, and He's still in control. How many ever had a day where it just felt like you just weren't going to make it? If this day does not come to an end, I'm just not going to make it. Now, you bunch of religious people, I know you've had days like that. <laughs> days where it's hard, man. It's hard. How many know life is hard sometimes? 
But on those days, if we can just remind ourselves, God is allowing me to endure this, but He's also with me during my times of testing. God is with me. And at the sound of His voice, He can bring this circumstance to an end. At the sound of His voice, He can cause the troubles to cease. It says, God's voice thunders and the earth melts. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. Can I remind you that His name is Emmanuel? God with us. The Prince of Peace. Somebody say peace. Is with us. My source of salvation is with us. My healer is with me. My provider has never left me. Even when the bills say something different, my provider has never left me. He is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Number one, determined to stand firm. Number two, Remember, you are not alone. And number three, prepare yourself for a miracle. Prepare yourself for a miracle. Somebody shout, today is my day for miracles. Verse 8 in Psalm 46 says this, Come see the glorious works of the Lord. See how He brings destruction upon the world. He causes wars to end throughout the earth. He breaks the bow and snaps the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored in every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. We must make sure that we prepare ourselves for a miracle. I love how the scripture said, come see what God is going to do. Because we have to understand this scripture was written in the midst of chaos. It said that the nations were in turmoil. That the, the earth was in chaos. Listen, I'm telling you, but it said, hey, I want you to come see what my God is going to do. You got to prepare. Are you expecting a miracle? Or are you expecting disaster? Are you expecting the worst? Are you expecting God to turn your temporary situation into your permanent praise? Somebody shout, He's turning my temporary situation into permanent praise. Say it again. He's turning my temporary situation into permanent praise. Look at somebody and say, he's turning your temporary situation into permanent praise. Somebody shout, don't move. Would you stand with me this morning?